Good afternoon. Thank you, everybody. It's a great pleasure for me to be here. Um, this is my disclosure. And um, let me start. Uh, as everybody knows, obesity is a, a great problem, especially in Western countries. In the US, uh, we have uh, at least one third of the population with BMI greater than 30. And obesity leads to a lot of disease like cardiovascular disease, diabetes, and is an high cost for healthcare. And up to now, uh, we know that bariatric surgery is the most effective treatment for obesity. And in particular, uh, LSG, laparoscopic screen gastrectomy, born like the first step of much more complex bariatric procedure, but now it's one of the, it's a single stand bariatric procedure and one of the much more performed, especially in the US. But it's a procedure that is not free from complication. Uh, as we know, we have bleeding, we have fistula, but one of the um, great problem with sleeve is the onset of GERD. And if we look at the literature, uh, the last uh, randomized control trial showed uh, an incident of GERD uh, uh, around 30% after five years from uh, sleeve. And we have also reports uh, that look at the incidence of Barrett esophagus. And uh, moreover, we have the problem concerning the uh, worsening of digestive symptom of after sleep. So yes, bariatric surgery is the most effective treatment for obesity, but uh, very few patients are el eligible for, for this kind of surgery because we have patients that are not fit for surgery. We have patients uh, in which surgery is uh, uh, contraindication, contraindication uh, or we have patients who are simply scared about uh, bariatric surgery, its complication. And if we uh, think about uh, ESG, we have to think um, we have to talk, uh, we have to think about this procedure like an endoscopic procedure, uh, maybe the most effective endoscopic procedure that uh, could reach uh, lower uh, weight loss outcomes compared to classic bariatric procedure, but could be a bridge procedure, but also a primary procedure, and maybe the best option for patients, for high risk patients, and for patients in which surgery is contraindicated. Uh, our aim was to compare quality of life uh, outcomes between ESG and LSG. And to do that, we used the, uh, the propensity score matching uh, in order to um, avoid any bias. And after the matching, we identified 23 couples and the group were homogeneous for age, BMI before surgery, sex and comorbidities and uh, to evaluate the quality of life of our patients we use uh, the Gigli questionnaire. Uh, why the Gigli questionnaire? Because uh, quality of life is a multidimensional construct, so uh, we have to evaluate emotional and uh, psychological well-being, physical function, social function and symptoms after the procedure and thanks to Gigli questionnaire we can do all of these uh, things. Uh, how about the results? If we look at short-term results, uh, the ESG was uh, a faster procedure. Uh, we had uh, um, a shorter hospital length uh, of stay. And uh, more important, we uh, didn't uh, uh, observe any perioperative complication in the ESG group. And uh, the readmission rate after this kind of procedure was zero. Um, if we look at quality of life, um, if we look at uh, uh, global uh, results uh, in terms of uh, uh, quality of life with the Gigli questionnaire, we didn't evidence any difference between the two procedures. But if you look at uh, gastrointestinal symptoms through domain, we have a, um, a clear advantage uh, for the ASG uh, compared to LSG. Uh, what about waste, weight loss? Uh, as expected, LSG was uh, much more effective in terms of uh, excess weight loss. And in both groups, we 
uh, observed a correlation between the initial BMI and uh, weight loss outcome, but this correlation was stronger for the ESG group. So what uh, uh, we observed was that in ESG group, uh, the patient with BMI lower than 40 had better results in terms of excess weight loss. In particular, uh, in this subgroup of patients, we reached the 40% of, uh, of excess weight loss. Um, and uh, concerning the improvement of uh, comorbidities, even with a, a lower uh, excess weight loss results, we didn't observe, we, we observed similar results in terms of improvement of uh, comorbidities. Uh, and also in our uh, series, we observed the problem of, of GERD concerning LSG. Uh, and we observed uh, uh, the 30% uh, of uh, GERD onset in the LSG group. On the other hand, we didn't observe this problem for the ESG. All patients uh, uh, after ESG had the endoscopic follow-up at six months, and we didn't observe any sign of esophagitis. So, um, as we know, LSG is very effective in terms of excess weight loss, but the price could be the worsening of gastrointestinal symptoms or even the onset of GERD. Uh, on the other hand, ESG could be a, is a promising uh, procedure that could spread uh, the armamentarium of bariatric sarcium. And what we observed was better results in terms of gastrointestinal symptoms. We didn't observe any onset of GERD. We had good results in terms of weight loss, especially for patients with BMI lower than 40. And in conclusion, is a uh, procedure safe? feasible, scarless, and potentially outpatients. Thank you for the attention.